Hello, my name is Dr. Eric Hibbs, and I'm the superintendent of the Marlboro Township Public Schools located in Marlboro, New Jersey. I wanted to create a video that would educate our community about the park test that students will have to take in the 2014-2015 school year. PARC stands for the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers. More than 15 million students will take this test in the 14-15 school year, and I wanted to educate our community about what the test is like and what they can expect for our students. Here's what we know. Students starting in grade three will take both a performance-based assessment and an end-of-year assessment each year in mathematics and English language arts. The performance-based assessment will be given approximately 75% of the way through the school year. The end-of-year assessment will be given approximately 90% of the way through the school year. Both of these tests will occur in both English language arts and mathematics. PARC has released sample tests. They are located right here if you follow my arrow. Currently, there are sample performance-based assessments for English language arts and sample end-of-year assessments for mathematics. PARC plans to release sample performance-based assessments for mathematics and end-of-year assessments for English language arts in the fall of 2014. In my opinion, it is extremely important not only to prepare our students to succeed on the content of the PARC assessments, that would be the Common Core State Standards, but our students also need to understand what these tests will deliver they need to understand how to navigate and be successful. To that end, this video will take you through a sample end of year assessment in third grade for mathematics. I will not go over the answers for content, but I will focus on how to navigate and be successful. Okay, so let's navigate to the practice tests. I'm going to click the drop down for practice tests and I'm going to go to mathematics. Notice as I scroll down, there are many options that you can use with your children, starting with grade three end of year math, ending with algebra two end of year. If you want to have your children take these tests, you can then use the answer keys to grade them to see how they would do. We're going to take a grade three end of year test today. I'm going to start the test and I'm going to start the session. Okay, before we actually look at the different problems that exist in this test, I want you to notice the toolbar up top. This toolbar on the far left has previous and next keys. Notice how only the next key is lit in blue. The previous key is not lit up because there are no previous problems from problem one. But if I navigate to problem two, you can see now it comes alive. This is a great way for you to simply, simply scroll through the questions the review button. This is a very interesting tool that our students need how to, to navigate. So if you can see here as I scroll down it will list the different questions all the way down to question 39. It will also tell you three specific things. First, it will tell you if you did not view something as in right here. It will tell you if you viewed it but did not answer it. If you answer a problem right where my arrow is, right here, the not answered will turn to green and it will say answered. If at any time you want to actually view a question, you can click on it and you'll go right to view the question. And that took me right to question 16. If I want to go all the way back to question 1, I can simply just go back and click view. That is the review. It will be a great way for you at the end of your session to make sure that you answered every question. This is a next tool, it's the flag tool. Let's say for instance that you are having a really hard time on this problem and you click the flag button because you want to come back to it. You don't want to waste any more time on this question because you have 38 more questions to answer. Notice how next to question 1 it's now flagged. In other words, come back to me. I need more time on this problem. When you want to go back to your question, you simply have to hit return to question. You have three final tools that you need to how to understand and navigate. You have your pointer tool, which allows you 
to highlight things. So for instance, if I want to highlight the number 8, notice if I highlight it, I have four different colors that come up, white, yellow, pink, and blue. I'm going to choose blue. And now, it'll highlight in blue. If I wanted a different color, I could also do that. You can highlight any important information in this test using that tool. So if I want to highlight 17, I simply highlight 17 and I click on yellow and now it's 17. This is useful for highlighting any important information that you think is relevant. The next tool is the ruler. If I click here, what generates is a quarter inch ruler. Notice the circles on either end. They allow you to turn the ruler. The ruler will only exist in the problem field. You can't drag it anywhere else. The next tool, which is the X, is called the Answer Eliminator. In order for me to show you what this does, I have to go to a multiple choice problem, and I click the X. This only works on multiple choice problems. So, let's say for instance that you want to eliminate an answer, you know it's wrong. You click the X, and then click the problem, and notice, they, a big red X goes through it. I've just eliminated that answer, and I can move on. If I want to uneliminate it, I simply have to click it, and then I can move on. Let's go back to question one. Now we can go through for the procedures you'll have to know and be successful on. Question one, this is a text box. Notice that when you put an answer in this text box, I'm going to put the answer two. I know it's not right. What generates is an X. If you then click on the X, it will clear the field. Watch what happens if I put anything besides a number in this field, and I'm going to hit the X key. It tells me that it's an invalid input. In other words, you have to put a number in there. Notice also that four text boxes, at the very right of it, there is always going to be a label. In other words, we're working in minutes here. Okay. If you want to unhighlight something, you can simply highlight it and go to the white and then it takes it away. Okay, so if I want the blue to go away as well, it's gone. That's the text box. Let's go to question two. Question two. This is a great question and a good example because it shows you right away that they will bold certain words for you to pay attention to. So I'm going to highlight two because it's in bold. So you know that you have to highlight and click on two answers to this problem. I want you to be careful because the test, at least the sample tests, they don't care how many boxes you choose. You could choose three, four, five, or one. And if I go to the next problem and then go back to review, notice it tells me that I answered the problem it's going to be up to you to make sure that you only click on the two that are correct. I just pick any two. You're going to have to do it for content. Question three. This is the same type of problem as question two. Notice that there is an important bolded word here. I'm going to choose pink this time. You have to know there's three fractions that you have to select. Okay. Pay attention to your vocabulary. It is the roadmap to success. Let's go to question four. This is exactly the same, but notice the word two appears twice. Here and here. Question five. Okay, this is interesting. In case you don't know this, hitting the control and plus or minus keys allows you to zoom in or zoom out. Control minus will zoom out, control plus will zoom in. If you zoom out, you can actually look at all four clocks at once. You may need to use this during your test. It's a personal preference if you want to do it or not, but it's a tool you should know how to use. Okay? Let's go to question six. And I'm going to zoom back in, control plus. This question requires you to read and understand the graph. 
you then need to answer a multiple choice in Part A and a text box in Part B. Remember, text box, the clue, the label comes right to the right. Question 7. This is a drag and drop. Notice that we have a highlighted vocabulary word again, and it's 3, and then I also need to know that I'm dragging quadrilaterals. So, I'm going to drag this shape, I'm going to drag this shape, and I'm going to drag this shape. Then I realize, oh, quadrilateral only has four sides. I'm going to try and drag it in. Watch what happens. If you want to do this, you have to remove the shape that you don't want and then put the other shape back in. That's the only way to do it. Drag and drop right in. Okay? That is question seven. Question eight. This is a number line. You have to actually plot the point on the number line. When you click on the box, what happens is it's going to highlight in dark blue, just like that. If I want to move it, I simply have to take another spot on the number line and click. That's how easy the plotting is. Question 9. This problem asks you to drag and drop stars. So after reading the problem, you then have to drag the appropriate number of stars from the box into this box. That's not the appropriate number. You'd have to read and figure it out. Question 10. Question 10 has five subproblems. The problems include both multiplication and division, and the symbols change. You will see several of these problems like this throughout the test. Be careful and watch your symbols. Question 11. Two text boxes, both of which ask you about stamps. Make sure you read and answer the question. Question 12. One text box. That's easy by now for you. Question 13. Multiple answers. You need three statements. Okay, Be careful. Like I said before, you can choose more or less than three, but pay attention to your bolded vocabulary. It's your roadmap. Question 14. Text box. Easy. Go for it. Question 15. Multiple choice followed by a text box. You can handle it. 16. Another example. You need to make sure you look at your signs. 17. I actually really like this problem. The first thing you have to do is read everything here. Okay? It says, use the more or fewer buttons as many times as needed to divide the circle into six parts, six equal parts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you that you can do that. There's fourths, fifths, now it's divided into sixths. Then shade one sixth of the area of the circle. So I'm going to choose this sixth and I click it and then it's shaded. And that way I, I answered all parts of this problem. If you want to clear everything, you have the reset button. Notice that when you start, the reset button is not activated, it's not alive, because you haven't made any changes yet. Okay? Question 18. Text box. Easy. Question 19. This is also a drag and drop. So notice you have four choices and three places. So you simply drag what's appropriate to where it should go and notice at the end you're going to have one left over. If you want to then change your answer, you have to drag one back up to the top just like before with the quadrilaterals. That's question 19. Question 20. This problem is a little different than questions 10 and 16. Pay attention. Watch your symbols. Question 21. Text box. Question 22. Make sure you see the bold. The bolded word 3 tells you that you need 3. Question 23. This question is similar to question 8. You simply need to plot your point. 8 eighths is equivalent to 1. And there you are. Question 24. This problem has a part A and a part B. There's, a drop, there's two drop downs in part A and a text box for an answer in part B. With drop downs, you simply have to choose the correct answer. And then you must enter the answer in the text box. 
That's question 24. Remember, all parts of the problem. Question 25. This is easy for you by now. Just the text box. 26. Text box. 27. Text box. 28. This is similar to questions 8 and 23. You simply have to plot your point just like I showed you. Question 29. Pay attention to the two bolded vocabulary words or words that just tell you what you need to know. We have three and then we have always, both of which are important to the problem. I didn't highlight it right, so I just have to go back and highlight it. And there we go. Okay? So I know that I have to highlight three for question 29. Question 30. Same type of problem. I need to have three answers. Right here. Three. In bold. Roadmap. Question 31. Four text boxes here. Okay? Notice the symbols this time. Two division, two multiplication. Be careful. Question 32. We have two text boxes, both of which asking for leaders. Question 33. This is a drag and drop. You must first read and understand the line plot, then drag and drop into the boxes. Okay? So notice up here we have information that we have to plot, then we have our X's that we have to actually drag in and you put in. So for each one, you would drag the X where it should go, and if you would like, you are allowed to highlight this and that way you'll know it's done. I love to do that. It keeps me on task. If you wanted to zoom out, remember, control minus or control plus, and you can see a lot more. That's question 33. Question 34 is a text box. Question 35 is a drag and drop. I showed you how to do this. You understand it by now. Read the problem, drag the correct number in, if you make a mistake, you must replace it. Question 36. Okay. Three figures here and select the three correct answers. There. Question 37 is a text box. Question 38 asks you for the expression and it's singular, so you only have one answer. And question 39 is also text boxes. Okay, now, let's say you go all the way through the test and you want to review your answers. Now, I didn't answer these for content, so you can see it will tell me that I didn't answer a whole lot and I did answer some. If you're a student, at the end of every session, you should go through here and you should double check anything A that you flagged and you should also look for anything that was not answered or not viewed just to ensure that you've answered everything. Okay, And that's the flag button. Remember, that's so important. Okay, that is your tutorial for your grade 3 end of year math session. I hope that it really helped you. Good luck.